Have you ever been on an airplane and heard this noise? Or how about this one? Every airplane has a soundtrack, different thumps, dings, whirs, and sometimes even a barking dog under the floor. As an airline pilot of 18 years, I know that sounds can really freak out passengers, when in reality, they're a completely normal part of flying. Today, I'm going to translate these noises into plain English. That way, you'll never have to worry again. To make it simple, I'm going to break these up into three categories, harmless, concerning, and potentially dangerous. But I'm not just covering weird noises. How about all those dings you hear during flight? I'll be explaining what those chimes really mean and why you shouldn't let your blood pressure rise just because a passenger wants an extra bag of pretzels. By the end of this video, you'll know why silence after takeoff is a good thing, why full engine power on final can be the safest choice of the day, and one alarm that you'll never wanna hear and probably never will. If airplane noises have ever made you wonder, is my will done correctly? Then this video is for you. So you can thank me later because after this video, you'll be as cool as a cucumber the next time you fly. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to take off with Gary B. Pilot. Let's go. Can I get you guys to hype up this video? This is a new YouTube feature and it could really help out that channel. I want that 100,000 subscriber play button up so close yet so far. Please help me out. And while we're at it, can we get a like and subscribe for Shay? She is doing all the editing for these videos. So good job, babe. Starting off with the Airbus PTU, or also known as the barking dog. On an Airbus, you'll sometimes hear what sounds like a dog barking under the floor. That's actually the PTU, the power transfer unit. It's basically one hydraulic system spotting another, like a gym buddy. Totally normal, and it's only an Airbus thing, especially for the 320 family. Leave it to the French to design an airplane that barks at you. Yeah, leave it to the French to make a bunch of unnecessary noise for nothing. Probably the airplane just trying to surrender before takeoff. Uh, so you're back, huh? Yeah, man, people love me. Well, actually, the reviews are pretty mixed, Big Mac. A lot of people actually said you're just a knockoff hecklefish. Are you serious? I was chasing tail before his 80th grandpa was alive. Well, that's true. He's not the first sidekick. But can I get back to the video, please? Have you ever noticed a grinding mechanical-like whine during takeoff or landing? That's just the flaps and slats moving. They change the shape of the wing so that the plane can fly slower without stalling. Imagine it like rolling up your sleeves before work. It's just the plane getting configured. Landing gear noises are some of the most dramatic. The clunks, the thuds, and the blast of wind that makes people swear we hit something. That's just the landing gear coming in or out of the belly. Think of it like slamming a giant car door shut. Loud, but routine. I have to say, the CRJ200 is probably the worst offender when it comes to this noise. All right, let's talk about brake fans. After landing, you might hear a high-pitched whine that sounds like your laptop is about to take off. That's the brake fans cooling the system down. Again, completely normal. And of course, we gotta talk about those famous cabin dings. Sometimes single, sometimes double. That's usually just the seatbelt sign passing through 10,000 feet or crew members just talking to each other. It's not a secret pilot code for brace yourself. No need to panic just because someone wants another Diet Coke. Or a Bloody Mary. Don't forget about those, Captain. You know I'm not a captain, right? But you've been a captain before, ain't you? Actually, yes. I became a captain when I was just 26, but that was 10 years ago. 10 years and about 10 pounds lighter. Here's the thing, if the plane is going down, you won't be notified via dings. You'll hear the captain say, brace for impact, or the flight attendants will be shouting instructions. Speaking of shouting, don't you need to shout out today's sponsor? My second ex-wife is asking for more money, so we need this deal. Well, it sounds like you need this deal, but I do love Amberjack, the sponsor of today's video. You may have heard me talk about Amberjack before. They're a shoe company that I really trust, and honestly, I bring a pair with me everywhere I go. As a pilot, they're absolutely a must for staying comfortable and stylish. They're sleek, and I can wear them all day without my feet feeling tired or blistered. Then there's a new pair that I just tried and absolutely loved, the slip-on. I just wore them to a wedding in Hawaii, and right now, they're my favorite. Is that how you got that beautiful wedding date? Because Shay looks way out of your league. I've been with Shay way before Amberjack, but you know, I guess the style helps keep her around. What I love about these shoes is how versatile they are. I can dress them up with a nice outfit or wear them casually with shorts on a sunny day. And the insoles are thick and soft, so even after hours of walking, my feet feel amazing. And the best part, shoes like this are normally between four and $600, but Amberjacks are just around $200 with free shipping, a two-year warranty, 
60 days for exchanges and 30 day returns. So if you want shoes that feel as good as they look, whether you're in a uniform, at a wedding, or just out for a stroll, seriously, check out amberjack.com. I don't leave home without mine. And now back to the video. Now, let's move on to noises that sound serious, but don't always mean you're in danger. These are moments where passengers go wide-eyed, but we're just chilling in the cockpit. If an engine ever shuts down, you'll notice the silence more than the noise. Good news, we train for this constantly. Modern jets are designed to fly fine on just one engine. That's why ETOPS exists, extended twin engine operations. Translation, if one engine quits, the airplane can still fly just fine. And here's the thing, just because an engine goes quiet doesn't mean the engine has failed. For example, most times after takeoff, the power is brought back from takeoff thrust to climb thrust. We are also limited to 250 knots under 10,000 feet. So that comes with a big thrust reduction. Your mom comes with a big thrust reduction. <laughs> Not to mention, we often descend from very high altitudes with engines at idle. That can make things very quiet. There's no need to worry. Next up is go-arounds, that sudden roar of engines when you thought you were about to land. That's just us taking another lap. Maybe there was traffic on the runway, or maybe the weather didn't line up. Either way, it's the safest call we can make. For passengers, it feels like a roller coaster just hit turbo mode. For us, it's just a part of aviation. An aborted takeoff is another one. Spoilers slam up, brakes go max, and you hear what feels like the whole airplane shudder. It's loud, it's dramatic, but it's also very safe. RTOs are designed to stop a 500,000 pound airplane very quickly. Thing is, if the pilots aboard a takeoff, there's definitely a good reason for it. Full disclosure, I can't account for every noise. There could always be a one-off noise that sounds concerning, but is completely mundane. If you're really scared, my advice would be to look at your nearest flight attendant. If they don't look worried, you can relax. Now, when it comes to noises that would actually get my attention, they're extremely rare. So rare, in fact, that most pilots will go their entire career without hearing them. And as a passenger, chances are you'll never hear them at all. But I'll let you in on a little secret. The most serious noises that would probably scare you will come in the form of alarms and alerts in the cockpit. The pilots are going to know a whole lot more than you ever will in the back. That's just a fact. Dangerous situations won't always be noises. For example, if you hear, Evacuate, evacuate, evacuate. Over the PA, it's extremely serious. Or if you see or smell smoke in the cabin, yeah, that's not good either. But it doesn't always mean the end. Having said that, here are some noises that could spell serious trouble. The lab smoke detector could be a sign of serious trouble. If you hear a high-pitched, repetitive beeping, the crew is already on it. It doesn't mean the plane is going down. But if it's not a false alarm, it could be serious trouble and a sign of a fire. Quick reminder, you should never try to smoke or vape on an airplane, especially trying to hide it in the lab. Better just to stay far away from fires and felonies. When the oxygen masks drop, it makes a really distinct sound. You'll not only see them, but you'll hear a loud pop and then a rush of air. That means the cabin pressure dropped. We're giving you oxygen while we dive down to a safe altitude. Scary? Yes. Fatal? Most likely no. The whole point is to buy you enough time until we get low. If a decompression event were to occur, you might hear a loud bang followed by hissing and whistling. But even then, we're trained to descend immediately and the aircraft is designed to handle it. Climb. Climb. Now, let's talk about the alarms that you probably won't hear. Fire bells, stick shakers, and master warnings. Unless you're sitting in first class, and depending on the aircraft you're on, you might only hear a faint sound under the cockpit door. But if you do, trust me, we're already handling it before you even knew what was going on. So here's the truth. Airplanes are noisy machines. Most of what you hear, from barking dogs to thumps and dings, is just the sound of normal everyday operations. A few sounds might be concerning, but still safe. And the truly dangerous ones, they're so rare, you'll probably never even hear them in your life. So the next time you hear a noise and your brain starts writing headlines, stop. 99.9% .9 of the time, it's just the airplane operating normally. Hope that helps, and until next time, stay safe. <laughs>